Well, hello guys, welcome back to the MJ Family Channel. Today we're back with more Star Trek toys to review, and here we've got some Johnny Lightning's Star Legends of Star Trek Starship vehicles. And today I've got the last batch of Johnny Lightnings over here that I want to show you guys. I got a mix of series ones and series two, three, and five, and including the last of series six. Now for series one, it's not complete. I've only got three that's sitting right in front over here. There's the Galileo shuttlecraft, the Clink, the sorry, the Romulan bird of prey, and the USS Reliant. Now these three are from series one. Now there's a few others. There's the original Enterprise, and I believe there's the original Klingon battle cruiser. Okay, the clean version that has got no battle damage because series one, when they first came out, I think it was the year 2004 or 2005. I'm not really quite sure. Now I don't have the stands for these anymore. Now the stands were a little silver, silver display stands don't have those anymore with me because I've ever kind of, kind of lost them over the years but I luckily I still have the ships so let's just get down to series one first so here is the Galileo shuttlecraft the very first Galileo and it is a very nice looking ships when Johnny Lightning first started doing Star Trek I mean back in those days I didn't even know anything about Johnny Lightning yet until my grandmother from England bought me this. She got me, this was my very first Johnny Lightning Star Trek merchandise. My very first Star Trek collection, to be honest with you, it was the Galileo shuttlecraft, and it was this very shuttlecraft. And it was very nice. The packaging that originally came with this was very reminiscent to that packaging right at the back there, the Refit Enterprise from series two. And it came with a Starfleet batch, which was actually a sticker so i've actually used that sticker and i actually sticked it on my t-shirt so i pretend to be one of those uh, starfleet officers you know because my love for star trek began in 2006 during the 40th anniversary and that's when i got this baby right here so this is the galileo shuttlecraft the very first and original one now this is not die cast metal these are not die cast uh, toys. These are all plastic, unfortunately. The only thing that's die cast are the display stands. Now, if you've seen my other video that I've done a few months ago, series four, please do check that out. And I've actually covered even the details in there and they're all plastic, only the, only the display stands, those black stands like you get on series five and series six, they're all die cast except for the ships. The ships are all plastic, which is not too bad. Now, paint application wise for series one is very basic, straightforward. There's not really much details to them because this is all because, you know, Galileo, the original Enterprise, there wasn't much detail to them. They were very clean looking ships, as you can see here. Now, over the years, um, the white windows at the front here was very nice and white, but over the years, they kind of turn color, so they look very creamy. They look a little cream color on camera. At least the Galileo logo is still there, which is very nice. Got the Starfleet insignia. There's the door, the little hatch with the two little black windows over there. Let's just bring this closer so you can have a closer look at this. Got some very nice prints here, NCC-1701-7, USS Enterprise. There's a little red box right there, printed there. Looks like a maintenance box, and there's another one right there, right at the base of the door. Okay. Now the bottom, that's where the ball, jock, these, the, the ball sockets joint right there for the uh, display stand. There's some three blocks right there. Some couple of black paints there as well. It's the same thing on the other side. The nacelle caps are white. The back end is just normal gray. NCC 17017 on the nacelles, which is very nice. Now I really love the back profile of the shuttlecraft. 
There you can see we've got some black outlines for the engines and the white for the interior. Okay, that's one of the maintenance box. And there's another red bar right there. That's very nice. And that's one of the landing skids at the back here. That's very nicely detailed. Even the bottom of the nacelle, there's your little landing pads right there. Awesome. Really love the Galileo Shuttlecraft. This is a very nice looking vehicle. Now let's move on to the next one. And we've got the Romulan, classic Romulan Bird of Prey. Now, this is very similar in shape to like the Johnny, L to sorry, to the Eagle Moss. Yeah, these are very similar to Eagle Moss, the size. But I actually like the paint application on this one. Now, Johnny Lightning has done a brilliant job with this. I love the windows. They're all etched in. Now, these are not prints. These windows are all, these are all recessed. They're all molded in and they're all painted inside individually. There is no paint splotches. These are very nicely done. And I love that bird, the, the, the detailing for the bird, the bird wing detail. The engine nacelles, they're black at the back, some nice dark gray. Now, unfortunately, the front of the nacelle caps could have been a different color though. On the Eagle Moss, they're blue, they're clear blue. Now, I'm not really entirely sure what the actual color is supposed to be. I'm not sure they're supposed to be red or orange. So, I don't know guys, what do you think? Leave a comment down below, you know, let me know what the original colors of those are supposed to be. But on the Johnny Lightning, they're just dark gray, painted caps. So, there's the front, okay, there's the front, it's a little red dot right there you see there, and there's some window details. There's the bird, the beautiful bird of prey, low, bird of prey coloring, coloration, that's very nice. Copyright 2004 right there. Yeah, so these were manufactured in 2004, and they were released for sale in 2005, but I got now, I got the Galileo in 2006. As for the Bird of Prey, I actually got this one about 10 years ago. I got all these about 10 years back. So, these were very nice for the time and very highly collectible. Highly recommend this. All right, now let's move on to the next ship. So we got the USS Reliant now. Now the USS Reliant, as we all know, this is Captain Terrell's ship, all right? Captain Clark Terrell, first officer Chekhov, of course. And, well, the ship got hijacked by Khan later in Star Trek II. Now, on Johnny Lightning's version, it is a very clean representation of the Reliant. Now, it is very clean. Johnny Lightning's version for Series 1 of the Reliant. It is very, very clean looking. There's not much detail to this. There are zero Aztec details. All you see here is just one paint application. It looks like a light, a very light cream color, because I think due to age, I'm not sure it's supposed to be white, but on my version, it has turned a subtle cream, like a light cream coloration. What I like about this though, the registry marking and the name, it is the correct font, the correct colors. You got black and you got some red outlines over them. Got the two lines here, which is just like on the actual ship. It looks like I've got a very tiny, I'm not sure you can make it out. It's a very tiny little Starfleet marking right over there. It's right there. Very tiny, subtle marking. It's very nice. And the bridge module, we've got the silver painted dome at the top there, which is not very accurate. Okay, we got the blue outline for the bridge module, which is good. Unfortunately, they could have painted two red outlines as well to make it more accurate. And of course, we've got USS Reliant, NCC-1864 registry just behind the bridge module. And then we've got some, so got some really navy blue looking 
colors right there and on these things these little details here as well i'm not really sure what these two parts are called that's all navy blue now the one little thing that i don't really like is that impulse crystal right there is the same color as this that should have been a different blue and it should have been more of an acrylic blue color to give it a more subtle difference compared with this now this shouldn't be blue this should be I think should be dark gray, I suppose, or a slate gray color instead of this navy blue color. But Johnny Lightning chose this coloration. But um, it's okay. And of course, the phaser, the phaser cannons right here on the on the edge of the roll bar. It's got some light blue. It's got some blue details there as well. Some blue tips for the front and the back of the phaser phaser nozzle. Same thing on the other side. Now the roll bar is very simple. Unfortunately, there are no torpedo red tubes, red painted tubes right there. Instead, we've got this two little red dots right there and this navy blue right at the tip there of the torpedo launcher. We've got the Starfleet logo there as well. We've got two stripes and of course a very tiny subtle word there i think that says starship uss reliant on it so there the for the forward torpedo launcher has got the details that's very nice at least that's there got some nice subtle detail right there on the edge of the nacelle pylon starfleet detail there as well the nacelles are very nice clean not much, but unfortunately, now, do you see that right there? Okay, we got NCC, we got registry out on the outboard nacelle, but there are no registry on the inboard side of the nacelle, which is an error right there, because it's supposed to be on both sides. Now, that is not supposed to be black, that's supposed to be brass, and that is black, that's, that's okay, that's black, but the inside, the inboard nacelle, the, the warp grills are supposed to be blue. But on Johnny Lightning's version, this is what we got. I mean, it's not too bad for the paint application of the time. Got shuttle bay detail there as well. Shuttle bays one and two, very nice. Got some impulse engine detail there as well. There's the name Reliant, two impulse engines. Okay, that's the front of the nacelle, not too bad some details there some black lines there now let's look at the bottom ventral view we got rcs we've got rcs thruster detail painted there but we don't get any rcs thrusters at the top and one thing to note there are no painted windows whatsoever on the edge of the saucer or at the back over here which is very odd so now, I don't mind the color and everything, even though it does look very nice for its time when it was made. There's your registry, very nice. There's the two red lines. Of course, you got the silver dome at the bottom there. Okay, looks like we've got, there's your ball joint right there. It looks like we've got some yellow painted bars right there. Looks like the cargo hatch. Yeah, that's the cargo hatch. That's painted in yellow. Problem number one is that the the phaser emitters, the phaser is not supposed to be yellow. That's supposed to be a different color. Now, this is a little error that they've done. There's the name Reliant. Now, the name Reliant right there is a little oversized. I really wish that it's slightly smaller than that, but that's not a problem. And there's the bottom. Looks like we've got this nice duck egg blue color here and this navy blue impulse crystal right there. Got some red lines there as well, which is a very nice touch. Of course, and on the inboard of the uh, nacelle pylons, we've got copyright 2004 Paramount Pictures. Alrighty. Now that's very nice. Now this is not the strongest up of the models. This is actually very, it's a nice little model. It's nostalgia, 
very nice little collectible. I mean, still, I highly recommend it, even though it has got, it, it lacks some detail, but it still looks nice though. I mean, the, the blue, the red outlines, you know, and the little Duggett blue, all, all that, just, it just works. Okay, now moving on, now we've got Series 2, but Series 2, I've only got one ship from Series 2, because if I'm not mistaken, most of the ships from Series 2 are battle damage. But this version is the Refit Enterprise from the motion picture. Now this is the Series 2 Red Alert series. Okay, we've got Red Alert. Now this one I think came out, this particular line <laughs> came out 2005. So this one came out a year after Series, about I think a year after Series 1 or in between. So. Now this is the non-battle damage refit enterprise. There is a battle damage version as well, which has, you know, all the scuff marks and battle damage to the secondary hull, the side of the the port side of the uh, torpedo torpedo bay, you know, inflicted by the Reliant during the Matara Space Nebula battle. All right. Now, now this is a very nice packaging right here. I really love this packaging here. It's got the it's got the beautiful shot of the refit enterprise and space dock and it looks so gold color right there which is really nice because it's the lighting the light effect that's shining on the ship of course we've got uss enterprise ncc 1701 refit there as seen in star trek the motion picture we got a very nice picture here of the of the cast the admiral kirk in the middle there we got spock we got decker we got sulu and we got Ilea right there in the corner. That's very nice. And of course, and these are the rest of the ships that you get in the line. So there's the NX-01. Looks like there's an NX-01 that comes with the series that's battle damage. And there's a cloak Klingon D7 battle cruiser. And then we've got a battle damage original Enterprise. And then that's the refit that we've got here, the clean version, not the battle damage one. And then there is another refit. There's a refit enterprise right there, battle damage. So there were six ships in series two. In series one, we've got six ships as well, but I've only got three ships, but that's okay. So here, refit enterprise, very nice. And it comes with this batch, this Starfleet batch right here. Now this is the 24th century batch. This is not the, uh, this is not the the badge that was worn by the Refit Enterprise crew during the 23rd century. This is a 24th century badge, more of a late 24th century badge right there. And it's all gold. This is all embroidered, by the way. This is all embroidery. Now we're gonna crack this open and we're gonna show it to you in more detail. So we'll be right back, guys. So we got the Enterprise out of the stain, out of the box, sorry. So here is the Starfleet badge, the mid 24th century, sorry, late 24th century Starfleet badge right here. Now this is all embroidered, very nicely done. Now they don't make stuff like this anymore. Now this is uh, like a sticker. If I'm not mistaken, that, this is sort of like a sticker. I think there is a, a sticky, there's a sticky tape residue right at the back here. So you can actually peel the foil out and you can stick this right onto your shirt or you can stick this anywhere you want maybe on your laptop or your notebook or something. But this is actually very, very nice. It actually looks very silver right here in the middle here when the light touches it. And then but all this is all gold, which is very nice. Now let's just set this down to one side. Okay, and take a closer look at the Refit Enterprise itself. Now this is by far, I think this one is a very nice looking ship in my opinion from Johnny Lining. Now this one, I really wish they applied the same type of detail as they did with the Reliant. Now look at this. Now this is actually very nice. This is like a light gray, pearl white-ish color of the refit. Awesome details right there, guys. You can clearly see there's the upper saucer. We got the RCS, you got your RCS thrusters painted in. Now, if you checked out my video for series four, Battle Stations, the Enterprise A, which is the same mold as this Enterprise, 
it has it is the by far the one of the best looking enterprise ever so here's the enterprise a this is the series 4 enterprise a now if you look at it it is beautiful johnny lightning has gone above and beyond with this model it is loaded with detail aztec detail is complete and everything i mean all the tiny intricate details is all there even the the tor the the phaser banks are nicely done now look now that's an accurate representation of what the phaser emitters look like now if we look at now if we compare the enterprise a with this is the series 2 refit enterprise now we compare both they're the same tooling they're the same size okay just the color is slightly different this one looks more white this one looks more whiter in coloration and on this one we've only got now this one feels like matte this one looks more glossy this is a this one feels more glossy okay now on this one this is more matte this is all matte in color but it's still very nice still a very nice looking ship it's got a lot of detail now apart from the missing aztec details at least it's got all the molded line detail right there the the, the basic panel lines okay we've got these little these little hatches right there these square red hatches and there's your phaser emitter that is accurate and the uh, the bridge dome the bridge module is also nicely done we've got this red outline we've got a very subtle duck egg blue right there and there's the top of the dome looks like it's painted in a two-tone color right there even the back end of the bridge module has got a little subtle cream paint to it which is very nice there's your black windows the, uh, the officer's lounge right at the back there that's very good and of course your registry now the impulse crystal looks like a silver i think it looks silver or white or i'm not sure camera is not picking that up very well it looks like a very silvery color like right there now the side of the, the edge of the saucer is nicely done you could clearly see there's the there are lines running down right at the edge of the saucer right there and all those windows are nicely painted in very very nice and the rcs thrusters are also painted in the right spot what i like is this part here okay we've got the very tiny subtle uss enterprise united federation of planet markings right there we've got the docking port right there the red square right there that is very very nice it's the same thing on the other side and the windows at the back of the saucer on one side we got square windows on the other side we got round windows round black dots right there and there's your impulse engine right there there it is very nice look like the accurate looks like what we saw in the movie very accurate looking there's under the bottom of the saucer ncc 1701 that's very good Our phaser emitters the cargo doors at least they're painted in the right colors right back here as well looks like we've got that painted in as well the name enterprise that is very very nice there's the neck of the ship we've got some red outlines there very nice there's your torpedo torpedo tubes at the front nice and red got some little black outlines there there's a deflector dish at least it is not one painted blue it is got some lines in there it looks lighter in the middle and it's deeper color on the outboard okay there we go got some starfleet markings on the engineering hall and the engineering hall is very clean there's not much going on over here there are no panel lines whatsoever in the engineering hall it is a very clean piece except for the saucer the saucer has got molded panel lines in there but on the engineering we don't have that got some very nice window there docking port the arboretum windows are nicely done they're all black there's the front there 
the deflector housing has got some nice subtle details there as well it's very light very very light but it's there there's the strong back the strong back there's not there's not much paint application on the strong back it's very light it is like a very light light blue right there painted there it's very light Okay, it looks like we got like copper, brass right there. That's correct. Inboard nacelle. The warp grills are blue. The outboard, black. The pylons are also very good. They're nicely done. Well, that's very nice. That is very, very nice. Even the back end right there, the shuttle bay detail. You got the name Enterprise. You got the shuttle bay right there. It's got some phaser banks as well on the top of the shuttle bay. Got two little red dots right there, which is really, really nice. I have to give credit to Johnny Lightning. I mean, they've done a really good job. Kudos to what they did. I mean, this is one of the earliest attempt for the refit that they tried to do. I mean, for me personally, this is one of by far, I mean, for series two, this is one of the best ones they've ever made. Not bad. It's got some really awesome details. Now, apply, now just imagine if the Reliant has the same amount of detail as this, this would have been a very interesting piece. Seriously. Given the paint, the, the same correct paint applications, I mean, it would have been a hit. And lastly, this display stand that came, that came with it is this one. This is this. This is the same display stand just like in series one. Now in series one, the display stands all look like this. They all have little writings in it. It's got the name of the ship, of course, on top. And there's the bottom of the stand. Now these are all die cast. This is all metal. There you got Johnny Lightning logo right there. We got RC2, okay looks like rc2 yeah that's the logo the brand right there so this was all distributed by rc2 brands back in the day yep awesome so now let's put the refit on the stand right there there we go now the next ship we're going to be showing is series three now this one is the johnny lightning legends of star trek series three uncharted territories this is the future enterprise d now on this particular release there are no starfleet badge whatsoever given right here so the only thing different about this it just says they're a new base design for even greater posability so by the time they started doing series three they decided to leave out the special embroidered or sticker of starfleet badges so they left this out and instead all we've got is the ships so there's the future enterprise d okay as seen in the series finale all good things okay there's admiral Riker, who is in command let's take a look at what else is available in series three so we've got the enterprise d looks like we've got uss enterprise d which is the standard enterprise d now i don't have the regular enterprise d but i've got the battle damage version from series four so please check that video out and we got a board cube okay looks like a very clean board cube yeah that's the board cube that's the clean version now i've got two board cubes series four with the sphere coming out and then i've got the other one right back there with battle damage so we'll get we'll get to that later so we've got uss voyager ncc 74656 looks like that's the regular voyager without the landing skids and then we've got a cloak romulan bird of prey and the ISS Enterprise Annex 01. So we've got the Mirror Universe Enterprise Annex 01. Interesting. Now I don't have that. So as I said, I've only got one of the Series 3 ships. I didn't have the entire range. I've only got, I was only able to get this because these ships were very expensive, hard to come by as well. So I was actually very lucky to get this for a good bargain about 10, 15 years ago. So, so let's just crack this open. Let's take a closer look at it. And here we go. Here's the stand. So starting with series three, you got this brand new Starfleet shape 
die-cast display stand. These are black in color. And of course, you've got the name of the ship printed right at the bottom there, which is very, very good, very nice. And at the bottom of the display stand, we've got Johnny Lightning logo, RC2, and all the copyright right there. Now, Series 3 actually came out in 2006. So this was about a year after Series 2 and Series 1. So let's just put the stand right there to one side and let's take a closer look at the future Enterprise D, which surprisingly, actually, it comes with a saucer separation mode, which is very, very interesting. Cool. All right. Now, before we get into that, let's just put it back on and take a closer look at all the details. Now, there are some hits and misses with this toy. In the Aztec detail, straight away, out of the bat, I mean, the middle right, this section right here is missing a lot of it. A lot of Aztec markings are completely missing off this section right here, which is absolutely strange. And I'm not even sure if that's supposed to have details or not, but that is even left out. But everything else is wrapped. The neck of the ship, the mid part, is also missing all the Aztec details. So in some areas it looks clean, in some areas you get Aztec, so it's kind of a it's a hit and miss, really, here and there. But nonetheless, it's got some very nice paint job. Detailing is also very good. There's the name of the ship. There's your registry. There's your transporter emitters. Just like on the regular Enterprise D. Got some very nice printed window details. But look at those windows. Those windows on the edge of the saucer is absolutely amazing. Even the RCS thruster, even though it's so tiny, it is there. There it is on the other side. And it's the same thing on the other side, right there. The impulse engines are also painted red, which is very, very nice touch. And these are the extra cannons, phaser cannons, mounted at the side of the bridge. Got some very nice orange and silver paint applications. There's a torpedo launcher right up there just behind the bridge dome. Very nice little blue dot right there for the bridge dome. That's very good. Now the nacelles though, they are greatly detailed. They are nicely detailed. Got some nice yellow outlines right over there. And now the Bassard, the Bassard collectors, they are clear transparent red plastic they are see-through you can actually shine a light against them and they will glow even these blue warp grills these are all clear blue plastic they can be you know if you put a light towards it they can glow very nice detail there though extra impulse engine right there behind the neck very nice okay we've got yeah, there's your registry there. Even the Aztec marking is missing right there, the top part. I mean, the bottom is done, but the top part is not. As we work our way below, there's your fins. Okay. It's got some good Aztec here. The star drive section is complete. Got windows. There's your Starfleet marking. Phaser strips. RCS thrusters there at the front. There's your deflected dish, very nicely done. Got, got that orange, we've got the uh, dark clear blue. Looks like clear blue, but that's actually painted, but it looks really clear, it looks like it's a see-through. Very, very good. Now, as I mentioned, this is separable. You can separate the saucer, which is interesting. Now, in the show, we don't get to see this separating, but at least as a toy, for Johnny Lightning, at least they've given this particular feature, which is a big bonus. So there's the, uh, this is the battle bridge. Looks like we've got all the magnetic, all the, the connectors here and more extra connectors right at the top here. They're all painted the dark gray. Even the phaser strip is painted in dark gray. We've got a very small Enterprise NCC-1701D there, that's very good. 
at least that's one little detail they didn't leave out so non and and for the saucer here looks like we got those magnetic connectors again all the connectors are there they're all molded in very nice and of course we've got the copyright there at least it's not on on the outside exterior of the ship at least it's there so it's all covered up now this is a very nice interesting bonus that it comes because in you all we all know the enterprise d is designed to separate so at least johnny lightning has given us the option of the saucer separation option for this particular one now let's just put this on the stand and we will get a move on to the other ships so there you go there's the enterprise d future enterprise d all right so here are the series 5 ships now when starting with series 5 johnny lightning decided to slim down the collections from the six ship collection down to four ships in the line so we've got battle damage klingon d7 battle cruiser here this is the classic battle cruiser from the original series and we've got the enterprise nx01 with firing photons and the Galileo 2 shuttlecraft, which is the replacement for the original Galileo. And this, well, the sad part, the <laughs> self-destruct, blown up refit enterprise. Yeah, we'll get to that in a little. So here is the Galileo 2 shuttlecraft. Now it is the same tool, same mold as on the first original Galileo. Now this one has got a very nice light, light gray. The top part here is all light gray and the bottom part is a slightly darker gray. Biggest difference with this one, only one window is painted blue. So you got Galileo 2, USS Enterprise. We've got the same registry marking as on the Galileo 1. And then there's the same detail there. Now. The, the nacelles though has added detail. Johnny Lightning added these little silver paints right here. There's three blocks of silver paint there. That's a very nice touch. And white, the nacelle caps are white. Same thing right over here. We've got the red blocks right there, just like, just like on the original Galileo. Okay, same there, right there. And on the back, we've got the same details as well as on the first Galileo. Black outline for the engines, white for the inside. We've got this little red, long red painted bar right there. And a light gray for the, uh, for the landing skids. Very, very nice. So there you go. There's the Galileo 2. Now, this is not the first Annex 01 that they've released. Now in series one, they did the Annex 01 as well, but on that version, if I'm not mistaken, it didn't have any of the Aztec details. Now on series five, I think it started, now hang on a second. I think in series three, Uncharted Territories, the Annex 01 that I mentioned earlier, the ISS Enterprise, the, the Mirror Universe edition, it came, that version, if any of you guys out there own the Mirror Universe Annex 01, it does come with Aztec details, which is very, very nice. Look at that Aztec marking. Now in Series 1, for the Series 1 Annex 01, it didn't came with any Aztec details whatsoever. It's missing it. It's only got a very... It's got a very simple paint job. It's all silver painted. It's like a matte silver and you've got these gold paints with a little light blue there. Okay, we've got the, we've got the black color registry painted there. Got some dark grays here and there. Okay, we've got the black lines, of course. And we've got the nav lights, the red and green painted on. The front of the uh, deflector dish is painted. And of course, the the nacelles were also painted very differently on series one they were all just blue it was just blue all the way on the inside now on series five this is the series five version we've got a beautiful version of the annex 01 which looks more complete apart from the fact that it comes with this 
photon torpedo effect. These are all clear, clear red plastic with balls on them, the little sharp ends on them. Now, when I first saw this on eBay, they they look very interesting. I mean, I mean they do look like photon torpedoes. I mean, they come out as balls. You know, they come out as these little bright balls that that shines and they whip across space before they hit the before it hits an enemy ship. So it's actually very nice. It starts off small and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's actually a very good effect. But I still really wish that I think the torpedo effect is not necessary for this particular line. I think they could have just left it off. Instead, we just have a nice, you know, a nice clean version of the Annex 01 without this. Or they could have done both versions. They could have given us the clean version and then this version with either slight battle damage or with the um, firing photon effects. So not too bad. So we've got very nice Aztec details there. The warp governor is also very nice. There's the blue dot right there. Got Aztec details right there on the pylons. Of course, we've got some nice brass painted right there on the back end of the nacelles. Now let's just take this off the stand so we can take a closer look at the bottom there. Now the shuttle bay detail, now these are all very clean. There's not much Aztec going on here. We've got some details here, okay, on the, uh, on this arm, okay. Got the nice Aztec here, and there's the lower sensor dome, sensor array. It's got this light green outline and then with a white in the middle, which is a very nice effect. Of course, we've got NX-01 marking right there. That's the cargo bay detail right there. The nav lights, red and green, very nice. RCS thrusters, they're all done, nicely done. And of course, all your windows are all painted in. Now, as for the uh, Basart collectors, those are not clear plastic. Those are just paint, those are just red paint. So, but I love the warp grill effect. The warp grill is painted in this, is printed in this nice red, sorry, blue dots right there, these little blue bars all the way. It's actually very nice. It's, it's the same thing on the inboard as well. Awesome, awesome detail. All right, now, moving on to the next ship. Let's just put this back onto the stand Let's just put this at the back here, and now let's take a closer look at, well, <laughs> I think we all pretty know about this one. Well, this is the poor old sod. This is the refit Enterprise that got blown up in Star Trek Three. Now, this is by far one of the most heavily damaged of ships that Johnny Lightning has ever given us. I mean, this is, I think, this is the only toy company that has ever given us a self-destruct Enterprise. You know, an Enterprise that is completely blown up. You only got half a saucer. You've got a, you got a representation of what the ship looked like after it got blown up in Star Trek Three, and, and it entered the Genesis planet's atmosphere. It got burned up. So, okay. Well, now this is the first, now, apart from, okay, it's got Aztec detail. One good thing about this, I mean, compared with, now if we compare it, okay, this is the Series 2 Enterprise. Okay, that's the Series 2 version, no Aztecs, and then... In series five, we've got a battle damage, well, self-destruct damage version of it, but Johnny Lightning has given, has printed a subtle, very, very nice Aztec pattern on the back end of the saucer right there. And the rest of the ship, even the nacelles, you've got Aztec patterns on the nacelles, even you've got some patterns on the, uh, on the neck right there, 
even the secondary hall, you got all these nice pattern, all these nice pearlescent blocks right there. They look very shiny when the light touches it. For me, in my opinion, I think all these black marks right here is is not is a little weak right here. I think this is just I think I think they could have done better here. Johnny Lightning could have done a better job here by putting panels in there, like like you can see the insides, you know the the battle damage sections or where Scotty patches up the hull, you know, as seen in Star Trek Three. But instead, we just got this black spray paint splotches right here, and you get the same thing on the on the nacelles as well. And the same thing that goes over there. You know, look at this. If you compare, this is the battle damp. This is the destroyed section of the Enterprise. If you look, that's the exterior, the outboard, the, the outside edges is all scorched black paint. And then on the inside, you got this metallic gray paint for the structural parts of the inside of the ship. I mean, that's the lower sensor dome. That's all blown up by the explosion. And you can clearly see all the little intricate details right there. I mean, they could have done a better job, you know, with, with these as well. Since these are scorched, right, they could have at least put some silver paint, you know, for some of the panel lines under there or something. Same goes to here and right over here, you know. But nonetheless, at least this is what this is what we've got. There's the front of the badly destroyed saucer. That is, I mean, look at that. Look at all the lines there, the panel, all the the interior structure. There's the bridge that's completely annihilated. I mean, all them Klingons on board that were in the sun in the bridge at that time, they got blown up as well. Okay. We still got the registry back there. RCS thrusters printed on. Got the windows there as well at the back. There's your impulse engines. It's all there. And these markings as well. The original Enterprise markings right there on the below. The secondary now unlike series two's refit at least Johnny Lightning was paying attention to put the details they put the correct details there the registry is now printed on the inboard of the nacelles and of course we've got the blue warp grills for the inside still very nice Given that, that this is a very this is a self-destruct enterprise, so we're not actually gonna get a lot out of it. But it's still one of the very first toys, miniature of a destroyed refit enterprise that we got, apart from Diamond Select Toys. Without further ado, let's move on now to the last ship of series five. And that is the Klingon Battle Cruiser. Now the Klingon battle cruiser, the, this is the classic battle cruiser, not the Katinga from Motion Picture. Now we've got the same style stand, of course. We'll just put that to one side. Now let's just admire all the details on this thing. Now this is the battle damage version. Okay, and there's not really much battle damage except for this part right over here. Just like we get on series four, when Johnny Lightning decided to start doing battle damages by applying these crystal clear yellowish orange explosion effects on the on the ships on the models and of course they put they add some paint effects at the side of it the scorch marks but on this particular uh battle cruiser you only got that part that's blown that part is damaged but the rest of it is very clean so i think this is an acceptable one and you got firing disruptors firing torpedoes coming out from the front of the ship, which is clear and green, which is very, very nice. There's the forward part of the ship. We've got some nice painted windows right there. Okay. There's a silver paint there. Okay. Now this is the classic battle cruiser, so we're not gonna get much details out of this. So we've got the Klingon logo right there, very nice. There's your engines. There's a little brass painted 
gold painted blob right there. Got some silver, shiny silver paint there, right there. Same goes there. Not much detail going on over here. This is all very clean. Not much going on. Two little red dots right there for the nav lights, I think, on the bridge. So this is actually a very nice looking battle cruiser. Now this is all very clean. So there's not really much to say about this piece apart from that is a clean looking battle cruiser. So there's all your markings. Not so bad. Love the torpedo firing effect from the front there. And now, without further ado, let's move on to the final series of Johnny Lightning. Legends of Star Trek. Okay, and we'll be right back. Alrighty, so now we're down to the final series, series six. So here is the Bork Cube. So this is one of the very last and final Johnny Lightnings. We also got four ships, so by the way, in this series. So we've got the Bork Cube, we got Excalibur, Yamato, and a Romulan D7 battle cruiser. So this is one of the last and final series of Johnny Lightning that they ever done. And after that, these were all discontinued and we never see these again. Johnny Lightning apparently has stopped making these for so many years now and these are now just a memory and for those of you who are lucky enough to get this collection I am very very grateful because these are very very nice Star Trek collections and if you're still lucky to get this on eBay but it's probably gonna cost you a bomb unless you can find one that's got a very good deal and so here's the board cube with battle damage with some explosion effects and of course you've got this green disruptor firing out from one end so we've got several explosions we've got one over here we've got two over here two over here none at the bottom here by the way that's the ball joint right there and one small explosion right at the back and there's one at the top so literally only the bottom part here have no explosions mostly they're all here it's got very nice detail here. Now, as I mentioned, I've got the other Borg, Borg cube as well, which has the Borg sphere coming out of it at the sides. That is the that is also a very nice version. That's a clean one, by the way. That's not the uh, no battle damage or whatsoever on that one. Okay, so so there you go. There's the Borg cube with battle damage effects. So let's just put it down over there. And now the next ship we're going to look at is the Romulan D7 battle cruiser. So let's just take this off the ball joint. Okay, so let's just put this to one side and take a look at that. Just like on the Romulan bird of prey, we've got we've got this Romulan bird of prey marking at the bottom of the D7 battle cruiser. So these are all the Romulan D7 battle cruiser markings. Okay, these are very different. Now, just like on the original D7, we've got silver here, we've got this gold paint right there on the pylons. We've got silver there for the engines. Same goes right up here. The back end here, no impulse engines whatsoever. These are all very clean. And there's the front. Really like that paint application at the front there. Not sure that's black. Yeah, that looks like it's painted black the photon torpedo tube at the front there. Got some nice black painted windows there, just like on the Klingon ship. Looks like we've got a light green paint. Looks like we've got a lime green paint application right there. Well, that's nice. So there is the little red dots right there for the nav lights. And so there you go. This is a very nice looking ship nice and clean now I will save the Excalibur for last while we move on to the galaxy class USS Yamato so let's just put the stand to one side let's just take a closer look at all those details right there now just like on the future Enterprise D we've got the same mistake here as well looks like Johnny Lightning has not corrected that mistake at all there is missing Aztec details right there. Not sure whether if that's intentional or 
is supposed to be like that. So, now the Aztec details is pretty much similar to the All Good Things Enterprise D. And of course, it does come with a sausage separation mode, but we'll get to that. And it's pretty much the same as on the future Enterprise D. So we've got the name there, we've got the registry, NCC 71807, USS Yamato's registry. Okay. There's your transporter emitters, that's right. There's the back of the neck. We've got nice black painted windows. We've got the impulse engines all nicely done. There's the star drive section, all nicely done. And there is the deflector dish, which is very painted very differently compared with the All Good Things Enterprise D. It's got the orange dish subtle blue paint in the middle and there's the belly section okay yeah we got missing aztec details right there as well and there's the neck loads of very nice sharp window painting there and of course lastly we've got the saucer separation mode and there is the name of the ship unfortunately I don't know about you guys. I don't know what that is supposed to be. Don't tell me that is supposed to be a painted phaser strip. Now, I don't think that's supposed to be accurate. If that's supposed to be the phaser strip, that's supposed to be painted gray instead of here. And the registry is supposed to be somewhere above. Yeah, all the docking. Now, unlike on the future Enterprise D, most of the docking clamps you know, the magnetic docking clamps, they're all painted in. But on this one, we've only got these square bars here, these square ones painted dark gray. So I'm not sure what happened. I mean, Johnny Lightning basically kind of fast, kind of like fast forward with this. They kind of like rushed it, I think. So they kind of made a boo-boo mistake right there. Now the bottom, okay, there's really nothing going on over here. There's no copyright details whatsoever. Now this is all very clean. Now, I'm, I'm just curious. Yeah, there are no copyright detailing whatsoever on the ship. It's like this one has been completely left off. So what they did, yeah. So all the copyright detailing are on the display stand. Yeah, they're on the display stand. Oh, no, they're not. No, oh, there it is, right at the back. So these are all very simple painted ships i mean they're not really much going on to them since this was the very last series made so i think johnny lightning must have uh, fast forward with this production and decided to end it i'm not sure why johnny lightning decided to finish off the entire collection by just giving us six series of ships i mean there's really a lot more to these ships compared with you know, if you see Eagle Moss, I mean, they've done quite a lot of ships. I mean, Johnny Lightning, they're so good as well, even though they're not die-cast metal ships. But still, these are very nice little plastic ships, but I'm surprised Johnny Lightning hasn't given us, like, a full range of ships. Mostly what we've got here is, like, repaints of the same mold of ships. You know, like the original Enterprise here. We've got, this is the USS Excalibur. We'll get that into in a minute. And then that's the Enterprise D tooling. And then they just renamed it a different ship. And of course, the original D7 Battlecruiser. And then this is the Romulan version of it. The Galileo Shuttlecraft. And then we've got the Galileo 2, the Refit Enterprise, different paint act different paint applications. And then we've got the one type of the you know self-destruct version of the Enterprise Refit. You know, and even the board cube. The board cube has also gone through at least three changes. You got the original board cube with nothing on it, and then you got the sphere coming out of it. And finally, we've got the battle damage version, which is right here. Okay, so here is the final ship. To wrap up the video, this is the final ship, the Constitution class USS Excalibur, NCC-1664. All right. Now, this is also a very nice, clean-looking ship. This is all matte painted, by the way. 
Okay. There's your nav light details painted on. Very nice. Got some lovely details right there. There's the side of the engineering hull. Got some lovely details there. Now, the one thing I don't like about the Constitution class ships from Johnny Lightning is this funny looking deflected dish. Now, that is not very accurate. That looks like a cone. That looks like a cone shaped deflected dish right there. It's got a little white paint at the front for the uh, antenna. Okay, there's the bottom of the saucer. The side of the saucer is also nicely done. Okay. There's the bottom of the saucer. Got lots of nice window details right there. Now there is a slight difference right here compared with the original Enterprise. The original Enterprise has got two red lines here, right? On the Excalibur, one side is yellow, the one side is red. I'm not sure whether that's accurate detail or not. I'm not really sure. Nav light detail is not painted at the bottom. Unfortunately, that they left that detail out, but that's okay. Impulse engine is all there, very nice. The Bassar collector is red. The warp grill is dark gray. We've got some dark gray bars right there at the back end near the end caps. The end caps are white or the same light gray color as the ship. Now on my version, on the starboard side, we've got some paint, we've got some paint defect right there. Yeah, we've got the, the black paint window is kind of smudged right there. Yeah, you see that there's a long streak of black line right there where the window is supposed to be. So that, oh, it's gone all the way to the shuttle bay. It's almost like a laser has shot has grazed the hull all the way up there. It's been pulled right along. There's the shuttle bay. Got these two little red bars right there. There's your little details down there. Starfleet markings is also very nice. So overall, it is a very nice, these are very nice little ships, guys. Alright guys, hope you like this video today of my Johnny Lightning's Legends of Star Trek Starship line. And if you like this video today, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you like to watch the Series 4 Battle Stations, I will have that video up in the description below. So you can check that video out. So, live long and prosper guys. And we'll see you guys next time on another Star Trek tour review. See you guys. Have a great one.